One of the things that my mother told me is to always have a connection and believe in something. Ever since she told me that, I've always believed in Mono Lake and our people here, and it's gave me a strong connection to believe in myself and feel comfortable. When I come back to the Mono Basin, I really feel free. I feel free to breathe the clean air. I feel free to walk across the landscape and to really think about what has happened here in the past. Just it makes you feel as free as a bird. Mono Lake is a refuge for the world. It's a place of peace and tranquility and solitude. And I think it's so important right now that we have places like this that heal people, a place to come to break that tightness in themselves and to open themselves up to the ancientness of Mona Lake. Mona Lake has seen so much and borne witness to so much and persisted for so long. It gives people hope that we can work together to make it a very positive future. Mono Lake inspires us to be our best selves. I really think that Mono Lake is one of the most special places on the Inyo National Forest for a whole host of reasons. Perhaps most importantly, that this was and still is the homeland for the Kazetika people. The Forest Service motto is caring for the land and serving people, which I think applies very well to the Mono Basin area. Mono Lake is the kind of place that steals your heart. It has a magic to it and an essence that just grabs your soul. What Mono Lake has given us over the decades is an amazing amount of surprises. You think after 10 years or 20 years, you've kind of seen it all, and yet it always has something new to show you. We don't know exactly how old Mono Lake is, but it's more than a million years old, it appears. And for all of those thousands of years, water that has run into the basin and then had nowhere to leave, except by evaporation. And that's why you get salt lakes. That helps explain what can't live here. It's too harsh. There's no fish in Mono Lake. It is way too salty for fish, but it's incredibly alive. The irony is that it just has very few things. It has brine shrimp by the trillions. It has flies, an alkali fly, that is super abundant. And those things are able to live in this really harsh, salty, alkaline environment that Mono Lake provides. One of the special ingredients of the Mono Basin are the tufa towers and tufa mounds that you see along the shore and also 
up higher elevations marking previous lake stands. Tufa is a calcium carbonate rock and it forms at the site of spring water and lake water mixing. Springs bring calcium, lake water brings bicarbonate and the two mix together and they form calcium carbonate. Mono Basin and its dynamic elements make this particular place very special to study because we can understand many different earth processes in one relatively small and isolated place. We can study history of past ice ages with the glaciers and their deposits. We have a active and a recent history of volcanic eruptions. We have active tectonics. And the interplay between these different elements make the Mono Basin an attractive place to study because everything is together and integrated into one small system. My name is Ryan Carl, and I'm doing fowler rope research at Mono Lake. I also have spent a lot of time at Mono Lake because I grew up here and uh, born and raised here, and it's my favorite place to be. I love to be here, and so I decided to do research here. I'm a big shrub guy. I love the shrub land here, and it just feels right to be here in the shrubs and not in the forest. The big open spaces, the big mountains, the bushes and the desert and the convergence of the desert and the mountains, all with the lake as the centerpiece. It just feels like the place that I ought to be for me. It feels like home. special place for birds, primarily I think because it's this gigantic food source in the middle of a gigantic desert. For say the fowler oaks or the grebes that are coming here, especially the fowler oaks, I think a good analogy is if you were to be taking a road trip where you're going to drive from Canada down to Argentina and there was only one place that you could stop the whole way where you could get any food and you weren't able to carry any food with you, you would want to stop at that place and stay there for a long time and eat a lot of food before you went on your way. And that's what Mono Lake is like for the migratory birds. They're going on a journey of thousands and thousands of miles and they need this one place that has the right food for them where there's tons of that food and that makes it this just immensely important gas station for them and they're going to keep going on. It's important to other birds for other reasons, but it's mainly the food. The California gulls, it's important because there's these islands that they can nest on here, and then there's lots of food here that they can eat while they're nesting. The closer you look, the more you see the uniqueness of the animals, you start to realize what an important place it is for them. Catches you by surprise where you suddenly realize how much it seeped into your soul to spend time at Mono Lake. What I wish people knew is that if you just take a little more time to go a little deeper, there's so many amazing things. Really, hidden in plain sight almost about Mono Lake. The 
Dumnezeu zic, cu zare că ne mă iau tuiș. We are the indigenous people named Kuzarika. We are a small tribe here from Mono County. Well, as of today, I'm, uh, I'm 92 years old. I feel like I'm 110, but <laughs> I know. Uh, Dad was Frank, my mother's Betsy. And I had four sisters, and I had two brothers. And we all lived in this one little house there at Farrington where, where I was born. And our bed was the floor. And my mom and dad had the room, their bed. But us kids, we had a bedroll. We are what to be called as Kuzetika. That means we eat this uh, larva out of this Mona Lake. That's what we're named after. The brine fly, or the larvae, was our main food. It was almost every summer when people, or most of the women, went out and gathered the uh, kuzavi, the brine fly. We'd get out with our winnowing basket and scoop them up. And first we spread some kind of a material blanket or whatever we have, sheets. and. Uh, Put that right on and let it dry until we're ready to go home. As far back as I can remember, we've always lived in Mona Lake at Rush Creek. And my grandparents and my relatives, they have never known of living anywhere else. We children, when we were small, we were just turned loose. There was no restriction of any kind, and we were just all over the place. Thinking back about how we lived is hard to believe, how we survived. Now this grave here is my, my grandma. We are people just like you are. The only thing, we speak different in our own language, and uh, that makes no, no difference. We're people. Well, the only thing we maybe not look like is the color of our skin. We do whatever you do. Maybe some of you do it a lot better than we do, but uh, we try. Somehow we'll achieve what we want to achieve someday, one day. would be for all of us just be together. Be as one. We're all people. We are the native first American of this country. We've been here and we're gonna stay here. You know, God put us here to get along somehow hopefully but it didn't happen. And that's how it became that our people was nailed down from wars back when. We were treated not quite as good as some other people. We never have forgotten it. We're gonna let's we'll try to forget this and this just try to carry on. Maybe the best will uh, will happen for us. I can't imagine how painful it was for the Kazetika tribe to have strangers come into their homeland and completely take over and change the landscape. It started with the miners and the settlers, but the really dramatic changes occurred when the city of Los Angeles decided it needed more water to support its population's growth. And so built an aqueduct that first extended into the Owens Valley taking all the water from those streams and the Owens River, and then in a second phase, extended the aqueduct up into the Mono Basin, diverting four of the five tributary streams that flowed into Mono Lake. 
with the streams shut off and diverted, completely shut off, for decades, Mono Lake shrank and it lost half of its volume and it doubled in salinity over those decades. And so people began to be concerned. There was no question that if the diversions continued unchanged, the Mono Lake ecosystem would collapse and with it, the food supply for millions of birds. What would be left in the Mono Basin once the ecosystem collapsed? A dead lake, dried up streams, and then ultimately just clouds of dust coming from the exposed lakeshore. To save a place, it has to be known. And one of the things that happened here at Mono Lake was we welcomed the world through the state park, through the scenic area, through the visitor center where you're watching this film today. The stars aligned to bring in the right people at the Mono Lake Committee and the right passionate citizens that rose up and wrote letters. It was just this wonderful collaboration of people that cared about this lake that made it happen. Returning that water to the lake not just brings the creeks back, but it helps bring Mono Lake back. And that's one great thing that we're watching and we're hoping for full recovery of Mono Lake's elevation so that it stays alive. We always have a choice to make the world a better place. We are connected with this planet in ways that if we do not make the choices to improve the ecosystems and the health of places like Mono Lake, then we not only lose them, but we also lose ourselves. Mono Basin is a place that's rich in history, culture, natural beauty, as you can tell, but also environmental marvels. Over the years, LADWP has been dedicated to improving the Mono Basin. We've done that by changing our operations but also by investing in dozens of environmental restoration projects. For many Los Angeles families, I think what I'd like to make sure that they know is that at the end of their tap, on the other end, there is a lake, and that we need to do everything to conserve and protect it. I think that Mono Lake has a lot to teach us about the power of collaboration and conservation efforts. The history of the Mono Lake area is one where we have stakeholders coming together from different points of view and coming together to, to find solutions and a path forward to protect an area that is just so important ecologically and culturally and an area that is beloved by so many people. I hope that those efforts continue into the future. I hope that when visitors come to Mono Lake, they see how amazing this place is and feel the urge to respect it, to treat it as it's treated us and enjoy the place and also leave no trace while you're here. There are lots of opportunities for visitors to recreate in the Mono Basin. The best place to see the amazing Tufa Towers is at South Tufa. You can also check out Old Marina, the boardwalk at County Park for different views of the lake. Panem Crater, which is nearby, offers amazing views from the top of the crater overlooking Mono Lake. And then there's really endless opportunities for self-exploration in the basin as well. Up here, a lot of my relatives would just take me out exploring and 
It kept me very balanced and connected to my cultural roots without me even realizing it. Till I've slowed down and gotten older and I see my kids. It's an amazing thing what nature and your homelands and your ancestors and your generation can can bring out the best in you. Definitely know that every step you take now on our homelands once was a grandmother, a daughter, a child that was there before you. Sad story, they're not there no more, but we still are in a different way. And as much as this land is our homeland, it is yours. So you should care for it as it cares for us and tread lightly, respect it how you would want someone to respect your own mother. What I like to do sometimes is just come down to Mona Lake and go for a walk or, or walk along Rush Creek and even get in the water because Mona Lake is huge medicine for our culture. A lot of my elders and our parents, they would come swimming down here. It's almost like a cleansing, but it's medicine for our people. It clears everything off, like, from inside and out. The one thing that our family really enjoys doing is taking their shoes off and walking. It gives them a strong connection to our people and to our home. You can sit there and have a little conversation with like an old soul, but a young child. This is the mother that, she feeds us, this earth. Looking for this earth, where would we be? Let's keep as good as we can. Keep what we got. And I urge you, and urge you, please, take care of her.